Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to This Week on Icarus. I am Zystars, and this is going to be the start of a what will probably end up being a series on the weekly updates that we get provided by, by the uh, good people at Icarus headquarters. <laughs> so, uh, this week we were supposed to get the... where'd it go? Null Sector stuff. But they decided to say, over on Prometheus, Prometheus expansion, they decided to say, we're still working on it, and we want it to be awesome, so we're going to delay it. And that's okay, because, you know, I'd rather have it good than have it not so good. So instead, we got a bunch of Icarus, uh, what do they call them? Project Clinic stuff, that's what it's called. So we got a bunch of Project Clinic stuff. So let's take a look at the first one. It says we're going to get, or they're going to, or they're doing an optimization to skeletal meshes, which is cool because what this really means is all of the things that have moving parts. What has moving parts in here? This thing right here, that's got moving parts. The drills, they have moving parts. The ones that, the auto miner drills, uh, the grinding, so uh, the, the flames, that's all moving stuff. Probably the animals. I would imagine animals that are outside. Trees waving in the wind. Shadows. Anything with a skeletal moving part. Is is when you're out of the area. Oh yeah, even that. When you're out of the area, they're just not going to move. Which should lead to some pretty good performance increases. Because when I was playing previous games i did notice that as i spread out on the map i put bases in the volcanic biome or the desert or the i just had bases spread out i would lose significant amount of frame rate and the only way to avoid that was to take those buildings down and remove everything or start a new game which is why i've started so many new games instead of just playing the old ones because the frame rate when you hit late game just got completely insane so that's pretty awesome that they're doing that now, what else we got? That was that was the skeletal stuff. So that's going to be pretty cool. I li I like I really like that. All right, the next one that we've got map and compass and beacon improvements. Now, most games I don't use the beacons. Prometheus, as you can see, that's what this picture is here. They give you several beacons. No, my 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 apologies. It's not Prometheus. It is the the missions. The missions that we do, they give you beacons uh, for various subjects, or vari various missions. I've got one running. Oh, yeah, I'm growing cocoa. Okay, ignore that. I'm growing cocoa. Anyway, <laughs> trust me, some of these missions, they have, uh, you get a beacon for them. I do want to say Prometheus has a couple of missions where you get beacons too, but either way, you get beacons from them, and, you know, you get to keep them because instead of leaving the beacon there you just pick it up when the mission's over and you can run off with it which is pretty cool that you get free beacons i don't know how long they're going to continue doing that allowing you to have free beacons but you can't tear them apart you can't take them apart for pieces any of the quest items so i don't think it's a big deal uh now mount compass oh the portable beacons also if you're a certain distance away they're going to just disappear oh and you can now name them they're going to disappear off of the compass up here because before, then you could, you know, if you had seven or eight beacons on the map, they would all show up on the compass constantly. And that's pretty unnecessary. So it's kind of nice that they're not going to be on there. The other thing they're doing with the compass, or maybe it's with the map, but you should be able to hover over your animals, yeah, and see their names. Either Snuffles and Octavius. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, poor Octavius. He's a horse now because, yeah, my other guy, the other one died. I don't want to talk about it. So that's that's a pretty cool update. That that you just a little quality of life stuff. It's it's pretty sneezy. All right, uh, mount. Let's see, mount compass icons only appear if you're within 50 meters of them. I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, the mount if you have multiple at your base kind of gives you a way to see where your base is if you don't have your drop pod right next to it. But you know, it's it's just a little thing. If you have a whole bunch of mounts or you're playing on a server with the, your 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 buddies all have mounts. It could lead to a lot of little white triangles, which could get annoying. So I get it. Now, the big one that we've got going right now, Tier 3 water cans and Tier 4 portable water tanks. Those are cool. The water can, right here, portable water tank. I mean, it's Tier 4, 
right next to the deep ore scanner and the composite drop ship recall button right on the side of the fabricator so it's right there easy to get to it stores 150,000 liters or whatever it's it can't be liters because it's not that big but max rates a thousand per second and you can hook it up to a water network i'm not sure about why this would be good maybe if you go somewhere that doesn't have water and you want to have just a source for filter clean filtered water i can understand how that would be kind of neat but 20 composites and 30 epoxy it's it's a tad pricey for what it is but it's not undoable. i mean 20 composites is a lot of composites but it's not terrible oh and you have to carry it on your g slot now tier three here's the water can right next to the water barrel pretty much all the water stuff it's just right here next to it. It's 50 epoxy. So it's more epoxy than the water can or tank, but you know, it doesn't cost composites. Also, you can't hook the water can up to a water network. So let's go look at them real quick. Oop, not that way. All right, here is the portable water tank. Uh, let's see, E to inspect, holds 150,000. Now, you can't put this in here. You have to hook it up to a water network to fill it. Now, presumably, if you fill it, it's going to stay. It's not filling. Okay, that's better. Now, this thing. Here's the water can. It also is not filling. Oh, it's oh, okay, it's full. So it doesn't show that it's full here. Large, bulky water can useful for traveling. So we're going to throw this out here for now <clears throat> let's see if it lo let's see if it hooks up here um okay so the portable water tank can't be filled off of just a rain reservoir it has to be filled off of a water pump all right so this guy normally you would stick this can in here it holds what 10 liters i think or maybe it's five this thing holds 50 this thing holds a ton and it goes down here can you see it on her back? Look at that. That is the most ridiculous looking thing I've ever seen. But it allows you to carry a massive amount of water. Now, I would imagine... Let's see. Provide mount water, water farming plot, and consume. So you can drink straight from it. And you can you can water your, your mount, and you can water a farming plot with it. That's pretty cool that you can do all of those things. I think you can do all of those things, though, with a water bottle as well. If I do this. Yeah, consume, empty, provide mount water, water farming plot. So it's basically just a giant uh, canteen slash thermos that I think you have to put in only water. I don't know if you can put tea and stuff into it. I don't know how you would fill it. If you could. But I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Now, I tried to put the, the canister on here. It does not fit. And it looks like you could probably fit two. Although, maybe there's a spot for three. I'm not making three because that's a lot of epoxy. But this is what the uh, mount from the surface looks like. Now, this particular mount can hold one. So, there you go. It's 50 kilograms. He can hold the watering can. Which is pretty sweet, because that frees you up to carry maybe a water tank or something. Alright, we got this thing full. So now, let's pick it up. Well, let's inspect it. Alright, so you look at it. There's no way to pull water from it. So you, it, it doesn't look like you can use it like a water bottle. Now, we pick it up. And we hit G. And it gives us only the option to put it down. So in order to access this, you would have to have something else to, for the water to transfer into. Okay, hook that to here. Let's see if it fills back up. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's empty and it fills up. So there's that. So this thing right here can fill up a water purifier. Perfect. And it would ima I imagine it would work with anything else. You could probably use it with the stove. The biofuel stove, you could use it with the cement mixer if you were so inclined. I don't know why you would, but you could. Uh, it also gives you a way to use these things without the need for power. Because as you know, normally with the water purifier, you have to push water into it with 
either one of these things, which you, it doesn't rain in the volcano, or you could get one of the water sources and, and bring up power plus a gener or a water pump or a generator of some sort, plus a water pump, and then you pump it all the way into this stuff. Or you just bring one of these. Look, at, oh my gosh. And then you're good to go. So, you know, it, it, it's a way to give you some options should you need them, which is pretty sweet. Now, the next one is the Mountain Tames update. So Mountain Tames now affected by temperatures in the different biomes. This means that if they get too hot or cold, they get modifiers relative to their current state to help manage that, various animal feeds. So I would imagine that means that if you have a Arctic moa, because there's, there's moas you can tame that are in the Arctic, then it would be fine in the Arctic, but it would suffer heat problems in other biomes, right? There's also, I want to say there's moa in the desert. But anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of different critters. They all have a, have a biome that they normally live in. And in this case, they're going to get some sort of modifier depending on where they are. Now, what's this say? In rare cases where mounts and tames disappear from the world, we have added some automatic logging so we can fix the problem map areas. Okay, so yeah, that, it, sometimes mounts just vanish from games. That hasn't happened to me yet, but apparently they've got a way to fix that. All right, the next one is gates for railings, which... I have been excited for now nah, I've been wanting now this doesn't stop the railings don't stop your mounts from jumping out of them if you are um if they're following you they will just hop right over these also the bear the tiger all that stuff they'll just hop right over and murder your mounts so these things aren't good for for corralling your mounts it looks nice but it won't actually stop them what it does do is it provides a good aesthetic you know I could come outside I could put some fencing right here and make it look like the area is kind of cordoned off a little bit, which is pretty sweet. So I, I, I kind of like that. I, I respect that. It's just a little quality of love thing. The next thing which I'm kind of happy about is a reinforced, a reinforced glass building set. The glass building set is a tier three item. You get the glass working bench and you buy the building set and then you've got tier two resistant glass walls, basically garbage walls. It, that's just what it is. They're just garbage walls. Now, in the past, oh, in the past, all you had to do was hook up the glass working bench to water, and then the glass building pieces would automatically become reinforced. Now, you have to buy the reinforced glass building set, as well as, what is this one? Oh, the half pieces. I'm not sure why I bought that. But you have to get these in order to make the, the, the reinforced. It's not free anymore, essentially. So right now we've got glass wall, glass wall, glass roof, right? This is the basic glass stuff. And before I could just make that and it would be reinforced. Now you gotta do this. Oh, and it looks like it uses steel and you still need water. So the reinforced glass walls are made of steel now, which is interesting. Now, as for the differences, this is the new reinforced glass. It has 2,500 hit points. This is the standard glass wall with made with iron. It has 500 hit points. Now, if you already have reinforced glass you made before the update, it's going to look like the iron, but it has the stats of the reinforced glass, which is kind of annoying because if I want to have this look different, or if I want to like expand my glass walls, it's going to look different. But, you know, in, in, in the long run, it doesn't really matter. Now, the plants are still getting full sunlight in here. And they've got the greenhouse effect, a plus 50% crop growth speed. And I've got a hard roof on top, which does need heat repaired. Oh, that's ugly. It does need repaired. But I've got a hard roof on top, so as long as you have the greenhouse all the way around, you're good to go. Now, if you don't want to go through using steel, you can put up these overhangs around it. And that will protect the 500 hit point glass walls if that's what you have. Like, you don't have to do the reinforced glass walls if you're okay with doing all of these lips. It just depends on where you want to spend your money. So the, one of the, the, the next thing that we've got are missions and operations updates. Now, this isn't anything that's happened right now, but it 
from what they say on here, they're going to adjust the way missions and operations function. So I'm wondering if they'll just end up redoing all of the operations. Those are the little missions that you can do that aren't of the main ones for the map. They're the same with every map. They're probably going to redo those to make them a little more dynamic because right now they are kind of boring. So hopefully I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to do with that. Now, the missions, it looks like on Prometheus, they're going to adjust the missions for what they're calling the null sector. They're going to be very different than what we have on the rest of the map, which is, I think, going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm very, very interested to see what they're going to do with all of that stuff. They're also looking into more exotic mounts and companions. I'm curious what companion, maybe they're talking about the wolves that you can have. So that that might be kind of cool because you, you can you can like tame wolves and stuff in this game now. So that might be kind of cool to have some more exotic mounts. I mean the mounts are, well the mo is not too bad. The, the Terranus is kind of a crazy looking mount, but I'd be interested to see maybe we get to ride the Tuskers or maybe a worm of some sort. That would be pretty sweet. Or some of the crazy uh, swamp biome critters that they have in in Prometheus. That would be pretty cool. So they are, uh, and they're, they're saying the delay with Null Sector is about an opportunity to level up. So basically it's, we're not done yet. We want more time to make it better. Hopefully it'll be better. You know, so that, that'll be pretty cool. They're going to do some stuff on the Project Clinic next time, which is going to be interesting. Oh, they're going to continue it. May, let's see. They're going to change the Null Sector, expect more improvements, quality of life to the base game, similar to this week so it looks like next week we're not getting null sector we're gonna get some more project clinic stuff who knows what that's gonna be who knows but they do want the null sector they say a hardcore survival challenge so that'll be interesting now what i've got to decide is oh a new giant a new giant creature new mutated creatures a new exploring mechanic new operations it's gonna be pretty sweet now i don't know if we can live there because i don't think water is something you can get in the null sector so you can't, you're not gonna be able to start there because there's no source of water. You're just gonna die. So you can start near it. That could be a thing. And with the new skeletal movements, I, I probably will end up continuing the game that I had in season eight and just move my base down that way or build a new one. That'll be pretty cool. But build it next to the null sector, or maybe I'll just go into the null sector and I'll just make a bunch of water jugs and take them with me and just kind of deal. I don't know. We'll have to see what it looks like. I, I'm excited for all of this stuff, and I hope you guys are too. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed the look at the week's updates, please let me know. Give me a follow. Drop as many comments into the comments section. Please keep it rated PG, just for everybody's sake. And uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. If you did, do all those things that YouTubers do when they like videos, you know? subscribe to the channel if you want to see content join my discord server if you want to get notified via discord whenever i upload new videos and just it just in case you didn't know members of the youtube channel get early access to all of the videos as soon as i as soon as i publish them they are well after the youtube does its processing immediately available to members whereas everybody else has to wait for the regularly scheduled release dates which depending on what's going on in my life could be a little while so you never know you get in there you get the comments in first you can see the videos first you could notice my problems first and point them out to me but regardless ladies and gentlemen i hope you did enjoy it uh, i will see you all in the next one zy stars out Shut up and sit down.